We are here at Air Venture Oshkosh. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm speaking today with Kirk Hawkins of Icon Aircraft, a, com a company and an airplane that has been getting a lot of attention for good reason. Welcome to Oshkosh once again, Kirk. You've been doing this a few uh, years now, right? This is our uh, fourth year here. Fourth so year at Oshkosh. Good to be back. Great to be back. And when did you start the process with the airplane? When did the idea first gel in your mind? Uh, Way back in yeah, time. A long time. It really it really was the synthesis uh, of understanding the tremendous opportunity around the regulatory change which created the light sport aircraft, the sport pilot, which uh, allows a lot more folks to access aviation who have a you know a, a, a romantic, enthusiastic interest and in experience in flight and get into it in a very accessible way. So it was, it was really the sport pilot, light sport, we studied that and said, hey, Here's an opportunity to bring aviation to a much broader consumer uh, market, and uh, that's what the icon's all about. One of the reasons why you got a lot of attention for me and many other people was your interest in going outside that sandbox, if you yeah. will, trying to find some new people to come into aviation. And that was one of the clear objectives. In addition to a sexy airplane, you had further goals than just the airplane. Yeah, and you know, it's not its not so much just, it's not for the motivation of going outside the current industry. It's that recognizing that when we looked at how many people are interested in aviation compared to how many actually are participating, there is a huge disparity in that. And like, what's the problem here? Because if we could get the entire planet in a room and said, hey, who'd like to learn to fly? A lot of hands would go up. Motivation is, is, is authentically tried to bring aviation to all those people who have dreamed about it since they were this big, and for whatever reason, have never have never crossed into it. And so now we want to make it exciting, compelling, safe, easy to get more people in who've always dreamed about that. That's kind of, that's I mean, at our core, that's that's what we're about. What you're looking at here uh, is a very close representation of what the production vehicle be. I, the production vehicle is actually, believe it or not, it's better than this. So the reason I say <laughs> that is that um, it's kind of like a, a it's kind of like a, a fine wine in a way. It's actually gotten the more our designers have worked on it, the more it's the more it's evolved. It's very subtle, but it's actually improving. If that can even be a little imagined. hard to believe looking at this, but you've got I, quite a brain I, I, trust up there in Tehachapi, California. Yeah. Uh, yeah, took a bunch of good people from Scale Composites, I understand, and set them to work on this thing. Well, yeah, we're fortunate to have um, you know, I mean, big fan of Scale Composites, and they've done some incredible work. Yeah, this is the uh, Spaceship One company yes, and many other things. Spaceship One, yeah, uh, and doing Burton Galactic and the Global Flyer and Proteus, so amazing aerospace engineers. We're fortunate to have a, a, a core group of some of their most talented individuals uh, get inspired by Icon, saw, saw what's possible, and, and joined us to help bring, use all their talents to bring to market. Um, this new airplane. Well, you've been hustling this year alone now. You kind of got pretty well down the line with an airplane that people really liked, but you had an ambition to go a little bit further than that, and that comes into this technique of spin-resistant airframe. And you, you told me earlier when we visited that you kind of had to back up, took a big gulp, and went, we could do even yeah, better yeah. than what we've been doing. Let's talk a little bit more about that spin-resistant airframe technology. Okay, so that, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about. There's a complex issue, but I will tell you, it's you know, the, F the FAA and ASTM allows you to do one of two things, either spin recoverable or spin resistant. What's the difference? Well, traditional airplanes are spin recoverable. In fact, spin resistant is, is a new standard, really, that came out of some NASA research in the 70s and 80s. There's a lot of work to try to make airplanes that, 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 that were highly resistant to ever getting into a spin. The idea is to never get there in the first place. Right. It's almost like anti-lock brakes for a car. You can, uh, traditional spin recoverable, you, you try to stay out of the of the departed flight envelope or out of control envelope, or if you do, the airplane has to be able to recover from that with those specific control inputs. Um, with spin resistant, what you do is you design the airframe so that it flies normally, but it doesn't like to ever go out of control. It's very, it, and you can put pro spin controls into it, and it doesn't go into it. Just doesn't want to go there. You can't say spin proof, but you say. It's been resistant. It's highly spin resistant. So uh, either one works. But but the important point was thinking about how is this airplane going to be. And we, and we really one of our mis one of the mistakes we made is that we made an assumption at the very beginning we go spin recoverable like everybody else. We didn't think twice. About yeah, that's almost all airplanes on the market today. So the first airplane that ever flew had a spin recoverable wing. It was a custom airfoil, custom wing, an amazing flying wing. Went through a lot of the flight tests. 
got to the spin testing phase, it started to, as we often do, we take a, we take, take, we take a break, back up for the problem second, and go, all right, have we missed anything before we go any further? And we stood back and went, okay, I think we may have missed something. We can, we're getting ready to use this. Why are we doing spin recoverable and not spin resistant? Well, let's discuss it. Well, we discussed it and said, these are light sport airplanes. And where are light sport airplanes flown? They're not flown, at, they're not intended to be flown at 15,000 feet. Right. right, we're down near the earth somewhere light, where you can see sport, what's going on. These are fun to, in my opinion, it's a thousand feet below where this world comes alive. And especially so on a seaplane. Especially it's so typically seaplane. flown yeah. low. So, look, uh, and then there's sport pilots, which are the entry point for aviation. So not that, so they can be qualified, but they're, but, they're the, but they're new pilots. So we're gonna have new pilots flying low to the ground. That's not the right combination for spin, right. for install spins. And if you look at the, then we look at the data from the FAA. Yeah, the, the accident statistics show that's a common problem area. It's losing well, control of the airplane close to the ground. It's actually the biggest. It, it's, it's the it's biggest. The single piece biggest of, one. It's the biggest piece of the pie is is, is uh, unintentional stall spin wind. So we looked at that and said, let's let's go after that. Let's see if we can fix that problem. Um, not because we have to, but we think it's the right thing to do. And we, we took almost probably eight months to a year. Yeah, that had to be kind of a big gulp to go, okay, let's let's back up here. Let's take several steps backwards. Yeah. And it's right in thinking anyway and reattack the problem. Is that it? Yeah, I mean it was it was the right thing to do without a question, but it was a hard thing to do because it was I'll bet. Uh, I mean it was expensive, time consuming and everything else. But ultimately we think we we hope the customers when they finally get it, what they're gonna get, um, is a, is a product that's significantly safer and game changing in that category, in that this category, so they have a lot more confidence. When they go out and fly around low altitude, they shall to fly safely and and and, and respect stall and right. loss of control. Course. You're still gonna take all the same training anyway, but exactly. But it gives you it gives you the it gives you the confidence to know that the airplane is not gonna it's not gonna bite you if you make a mistake. That's a good thing to know. Well and, and how did you accomplish that? Uh, a lot of hard work. So I, I'm not trying to dodge that question. We, what, what we did was we. It's we just a big question. We yeah. effectively we got. We studied all the existing body of knowledge. Like, like we often do when we start a problem. We said, okay, what do we know already? Who are the smartest people on 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 the planet right now that know about that topic? And we and we get them in a room and we learn what they learn. And then we go, okay, what don't you know? And then we and then we bring new thinking to the table to advance that advance that problem. That that's that's a big picture. Uh, the fundamentals of spin resistance are, are, are pretty well documented, so there's nothing new in the specific techniques you use. Um, you kind of knew what you had to do. The well, question well, was, how you know what the levers it. are you can do, but how you set those levers and make this airplane work right turns out to be really hard. Um, it's really well, I do know from my own experience that some other companies have tried this, uh, some that I was associated with earlier in my career tried it. Gave it a pretty good shot. Spent a lot of money on it. Still didn't quite get there. So it's a very significant thing you've accomplished, just by my own knowledge. And others have agreed with that. And you had some wonderful video that showed exactly, sort of step by step, not step by step through the process, but what the result of the processes were. And you've got an example of that wing over here, I believe, don't you? Yes, we do. Yeah, we have. Like Why don't we go over and have a look at the wing, and maybe sure. you can tell us a little more about it okay. right with it in front of us. Okay. Yeah, we brought this in to help the consumers, to help people understand what spin resistance is and how we've sort of gone about it. Um, in a nutshell, to make an airplane spin resistant, uh, the wing can never quit flying throughout some pretty big angles of attack, particularly the outboard section of the wing. And there are different techniques you, you use to control that. If you watch the video, you'll see, in fact, on, on this wing, we, we see these little tufts things. These are called the. These are for flow visualization, uh, visuals, visualization devices. Uh, yeah, sometimes they get all kind of going crazy. If you watch the video, you, you can see which way the wind is blowing, and and so they align themselves when they're attached with the wing. And you watch the video as the stall progresses, they start moving around, and that tells you that you have separated flow. So yeah, the video you have is quite show, dramatic, and, shows that, and you yeah. can see it's in the center section right. where the so, wildness so, starts to happen. Right, and so these are used for a long, we've had over 500 test flights, we put cameras on the airplane, and we're watching and through all these test scenarios what's going on with the flow to figure out how, how the airplane is stalling and how it's working. So how do you keep the outboard yeah. section flying and let the inboard section stall? That, that's, okay. we think this is the first 
airplane in history that's been designed, all the flying surfaces were designed from the ground up specifically for spin resistance. Yeah, so a lot of so they're proprietary airfoils throughout, designed specifically for spin resistance. Um, there's uh, ways you twist and, and and design the wing geometrically in order to improve its low speed handling and its ability to not stall the outboard section. You'll see a pretty distinctive thing here, which is that leading edge cuff, which 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 allows the outboard to, to fly at high, higher higher angles of attack, um, and and this discontinuity here. Um, effectively sets up a vortex and allow and tries to separate the, the outboard and inboard flow field so that the stall progresses this direction and this and this vortex off up here stops it here and tries to prevent the stall from going any further. What you don't want is the outboard section to stall. For two, uh, two section stall, the outboards are uh, still are still attached and you have full roll control so you can hold the airplane in a full stall about a thousand foot a minute rate of descent, and then you and you continue to have roll control while it's stalled. They were holding a stick full back and right. still doing right. this thing. Yeah, full roll control, and then if, and then it, if you put in pro rudder entries, the airplane will not go into a spin. Ah, yeah, okay. that's that's the, that's, that, the, that's, that's one of the big. Differences. That's the hard part. So right when that was all happening, that's when all these tufts here they just kind of go wild in every which direction. But out there, it looked like nothing was happening. Right, and that was the whole goal of it. Right, it looks easy getting there. I'll be honest with you. It, um, it's it surprised. Uh, I mean, we have. I'm not. We, we literally brought some guys in that are some V, if not the best aerodynamicists on on the planet. And they, we walked in the problem going, okay. You look good. We, you know, we've seen the studies. We've seen, it, and we can. You know, we can. It looks like it's doable. We didn't realize how hard it actually. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't know that when you went in. Huh? <laughs> it's a it's a great point. I'm glad we didn't know that because we underestimated it. I, I mean, we end up getting into it. Okay, now we're into it. We fought yeah. through it. But um, now you had to finish. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. well, you know, we've seen cuffs out. before, but I don't know any. I don't. I'm not aware of any other company that said we've yeah. achieved spin-resistant airframe yeah. technology. And, and, and cuffs aren't to just, the level that you've achieved it at. Cuffs aren't just for spin resistance; they help for low-speed handling, which is a good thing. Um, so other keeping cuffs, the airflow over the ailerons. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's more to spin resistance than just the cuff, but it's it's the easiest thing to sort of point out. This is part it's of the, the part equation. you can see. Yes, part of the equation. Okay, great. Well, thinking about this task that you entered into here, you took off the old wing, you set it aside, yeah. put it in the Icon Museum to be someday, and you started with a whole new wing. That had to set back the process yeah. several months, which means production months. got right. set back several months too. Yeah, it did, unfortunately it did. So we're looking at, I mean, it's, it's the right thing to do, it slipped the timeline. Uh, production wise though, we're, we're uh, setting up production right now, we got 40,000 feet of new production facility up in uh, Tehachapi. First wing, first wings are scheduled to start being produced at the end of this year. Okay. Uh, assembly starts from that point on. Fuselages, uh, knock on wood. The first production vehicles are uh, next summer. Is that right? Next summer. That's cool. Well, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Best of luck with that, Kirk. You've been Thank working you. long and hard yeah. on this. We, got we want to see you succeed. We need Icon to succeed oh, in a number of different ways. Where do we go to get even more information? You got a great looking website. What's the name of it? Uh, it's iconaircraft.com. It's easy. Okay, we'll put that up on the screen. Okay. Everybody watching this is at their computer already. They'll be typing it in. Okay. I'll have more about the aircraft and have already written about it on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining us today.